Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Phoenix and Glitchy Talk Shit. This is part two of our Get It Gets Better videos. It's my turn. Yes, and I'm going to be quiet for most of the video so that she can tell her story. And yeah, so um, I may like say something at the end, but for now, I'll let Glitchy have the floor. I'm to fucking like move my camera around. I'm having issues. Um, it's been a few days since we last recorded, um, <laughs> so you probably won't see this for a while, which is fine. Um, as you can tell, I did my nails. I'm, I'm having a bit of an obsession with nails lately, but that's neither here nor there. Today's topic is surviving mental illnesses. I'm bipolar, and according to some of my... Or, well, not some of, I only have one. According to one of my therapists, I also have... Therapist, psychiatrist, I don't know, I never get those two. I always get those two confused, but that's neither here nor there. I am also... Um, I have mild borderline personality disorder. When, that, when I was told that, I just kind of sat there and I was like, who doesn't? <laughs> um... I'm at a place where I can joke and, you know, crack shit and talk, you know, spew jokes about my, my, my disorders. And that's fine. But what you guys won't really see on these videos is the dark sides of it. The pitfalls that come with being... Or, well, come with having a mental disorder. I hate saying that it gets better, because that's too much of a broad term in this regard. It doesn't always get better, but it gets manageable. And it can get better. It can. It can get better. And for some people, it does. But for a lot of us, a lot of us suffering mental illnesses and disorders and whatnot. It doesn't get better, but it gets manageable. It gets livable. And in the end, sometimes that is better. I think that being able to manage, properly manage your, your disorders, your dysfunctions, your whatevers, is healthier than expecting and you know thinking well where's my shit when's the world gonna fucking realize they owe me the world doesn't owe you anything you got a bad deck or you got a bad hand when the cards were passed out the best you can do learn to live with it through proper medication and I cannot stress this enough when it comes to medication do not settle. In all things, in all things, in all ways, in all aspects of life, you can settle on whatever the fuck you want, but do not fucking settle when it comes to your medication and health needs. And can I make a comment on this? Mm -hmm. Doctors are human. And this goes not just in medications. This goes not just in mental illnesses. Um, if you are not sure about something, if something doesn't feel right to you, get a second opinion. This is from someone who spent opinion, a lot of time. Get a third opinion. Right. Get, until you find something that you can understand, or you get to a point where the, all the opinions are the exact fucking same. You know, this is coming from someone who spent time with doctors. I've been to a couple. <laughs> Quite a few, actually. Mm -hmm. They're human, too. They go to school, and they get training, some better than others. So, it's always a good idea, if you're not sure about something, to get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. Especially something that's in as important as your mental health. Exactly. If you start if you could put on medicine, give it a week or so or more to fully get in your system. 
But if it doesn't feel right, after that week or two, if it doesn't feel right, if you feel any discomfort, if you feel upset or depressed or sad or like you're getting worse, I don't care what time of day it is, you fucking call your therapist, your fucking physician, whatever. You call, you leave a message, you do something. Don't be afraid. That was one of my biggest problems growing up. I was afraid to tell anybody anything about what was wrong with me. Because I saw the looks. I saw the pulling away. I saw and heard the things that people would say. And even today, mental health issues generally get swept under the rug. And that's not okay. What you need to do is, you need to voice what's wrong. You need to tell people. And you need to see a doctor. You need to figure out some way to get a hold of a doctor. There's, there's places that'll help you. There's, you know, there's, there's phone numbers you can call. It's as simple as a Google search or if you don't have that, go to a library and use the internet there. Or if you can't manage that, find some way. Find a way to get the help you need. One of my and so sorry. Go ahead. And sometimes it's as simple as finding somebody that you can talk to that knows how to, you know, get you the resources you need. Especially if you're a teenager and you're not sure, you know, mm. how, how to go about it. Find an adult that you trust that will understand that you're in need of help. Exactly. Um, and I didn't have that growing up. <clears throat> I grew up with a dad who was never around because he was a truck driver. And when he was around, he was either staring at the TV, getting drunk, um, spewing verbal abuses at me and my mother and my brother, and physical abuses even. Um, there's more than once that I got hit. My brother didn't get hit nearly as much as I did. Um, now, see, me personally, I am extremely antagonistic. And, back then, I was also extremely defiant, extremely antagonistic, because what they originally thought was wrong with me was ADHD. Attention Hyperactive Deficit Disorder. Wait, I did, did AD? Attention yeah, you Deficit did, you Hyperactive did. Disorder. Um, they will hand that disorder out like it's Skittles. They will hand it out to anybody. In fact, my elementary school wanted to put have me tested for it, except my mother knew that I didn't have it because I was just a regular kid. Regular kids can be hyper, okay? That's, That's just how... what it is. It's a, you're, you're a kid. You're fucking bursting with energy. You're growing. You're changing. Everything's happening and new and... Ah! Synapses and are firing, people. Stop fucking drugging your fucking kids when there's nothing wrong with them. A, a good example of this is when I was a kid, we played music in the house all the time. And so I would sing along. Mm -hmm. Well, my first grade teacher played music in the classroom. And my parents wonder, you know, he sings along to the radio. And I had to learn not to sing along while I was doing my work. <laughs> but we had a substitute that came in one day, and she said that I needed to be evaluated. And it wasn't until my mother stepped in and said, wait, hey, wait a minute, no, that that got a stop to put to it. Now, see, that's the thing. All these people want to sit there and tell you that you've got something wrong with you. I mean, whether or not that's true, they are not medical professionals. Unless you are sitting there in a fucking physician's office, a therapist's office, a psychiatrist's office, some fucking dude with a shit ton of plaques on the wall certifying that they have a medical fucking license and degree, 
ignore them. You need to understand that you have to monitor what you yourself do. And I know, God, oh my God, I know it is hard. It is hard to fucking see or feel or even notice when you change. And I still have issues figuring out when I'm gonna change. But I can feel at times when it's coming. There'll be a kind of pressure maybe in my throat or a, um, not a tingling or like static, but I kind of relate it to static at the back of my brain. You know that thing that happens when you get on a really shitty ri like t uh, TV station and suddenly it's all white noise and it's all fucking <laughs> kind of shit? Mm -hmm. That will happen. Sometimes I'll feel it at the back of my neck. I'll feel it in my throat. Or... It's so stupid. Sometimes I'll feel it in my nose. I'll feel an extreme pressure in my nasal passages. And it's not, you know, being sick. It's... The spreading of... The rage that'll build. Or... If it's rage, if it's rage, then it's the tension in my throat. It's the fucking static at the back of my neck. It's that that if it's if it's mania, if it's hyperactivity, and it's ah! generally it's more of a blooming in my chest of energy. And no, I'm not talking like oh I'm a witch or something like that or energies like that. I'm talking physical, bodily energies that people fucking produce. I'll Hold feel up. it in my chest, and it'll, it'll be a blooming of, let's get this shit going, kind of thing. And generally, kind of sometimes that'll lead to something stupid. <laughs> or if I'm particularly manic, everything in my brain blurs. My thoughts kind of get... Think the Autobahn, if that's the right road in Germany, and you have to go as fast as you fucking can. Think a cracked out gerbil on a fucking wheel. Hamster, gerbil, I don't fucking know. Analogies for days. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't grow up in a safe environment for what was wrong with me. You I grew up, up with assholes. Well, there's that. I grew up with assholes, and I also grew up in a town... That if you, any town really, it doesn't matter where you grew up or not. There's always people who will fucking try to tear you down. And God forbid they find out you have a mental illness. God forbid they see you have to go to the principal's office or the secretary's office or whatever at lunchtime every day to get your fucking medicine. If they try to put you on Ritalin... If they try to put you on Ritalin, please tell them to shove it up their asses in a nice way. Figure that out on your own. However you can make that nice. That but shit gets handed out like Skittles, too. That shit gets... Excuse, exactly. It gets handed out like Skittles when in... When in, in whenever and wherever somebody gets diagnosed as being ADHD or ADD or whatever. I had the severe version of ADHD, according to therapists, when I was a kid. I'm 26. Oh god, no, I'm not. I'm 27. Oh wait, am I 27? Alex? When is your birthday? July 1st. It just happened. Fuck. No. I think I'm what 28. year? 87. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, 87? I think I'm 28 now. Hold on, math is happening. <laughs> Babe! How old am I? 28, okay. <laughs> yes, that just happened, folks. I just have to yell for my boyfriend to tell me my age. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. 28, yeah. Yeah, I'm 28. I did the math. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yay, math. Yay, math. Fuck math, I hate it. Yeah, fuck don't math fuck math. Don't ass. fuck math, okay? Seriously, if you're good at math, if you're good at math, that's awesome. That's amazing. Help me. I'm terrible. <laughs> but like I said, like I was saying, back on the topic, 
I'm 28 years old. A lot's changed since I was a kid, but a lot is still the same in the medical industry. Especially in the field of mental illnesses. People will still give broad spectrum diagnoses. And that's a problem. But a lot of the reason that it gets done is because people won't tell what's wrong with them. They'll, they'll hide things. And that's a huge mistake on your part. And I know it's hard. Trust me. Honey, listen to me. I know it's hard. It's not easy admitting that you've got shit wrong with you. And to this day, I still hate to a degree, I hate telling people because there's such a stigma on it. There's such a fucking, oh, ew, you're bipolar? Ugh. Are you gonna be okay? Are you gonna freak out? I'm gonna freak out if you keep talking to me like that. Now, one of my issues is Bipolar isn't just mood swings. Yes, people will say that it's just mood swings, one extreme or the other, but it's not just that. <laughs> There's so many other, like, millions of factors that go into bipolarism, and it's not all in the books. And like Phoenix said, doctors are human. They're going to make mistakes. Hopefully less mistakes than normal plebeians of the world. <laughs> but you always need to get a second opinion. You always need to, to a degree, do your own research. But Jesus fucking Christ, stay off of WebMD. WebMD says everything is cancer. It, you search mental illness on WebMD and it'll tell you you have brain cancer. And mm -hmm. that you're going to like, your head's going to explode and tiny tentacle monsters are going to fall out. Like, really? That's... <laughs> Tentacle monsters. That's an Web video WebMD. entirely. WebMD fucktarded assholes. Now listen to me. Here you see me. I'm trying to be serious and I'm trying to stay on point. But I birdie often. <laughs> Shut up. I mean you guys saw. I just had to like ask my boyfriend how the fuck old I am. Now, one of the problems I had growing up was I had parents who liked to let me be stupid. That shit's wrong. They didn't teach me things. They just let me have assumptions of the way the world worked. And a lot of my assumptions were, oh, that's how it works, TV. They know what's up. So I lived a lot of my life acting like I was in some fucking movie. It doesn't work like that. I was mercilessly teased. I was made fun of. I was... Well, they attempted to beat me up. Usually I beat them. A lot. <laughs> and that's the thing. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for yourself. But you also need to know when to sit down and just ignore these fools. And I'm gonna give you advice that I never followed, and I should have. Don't worry about making friends. Oh no, you'll you'll find friends eventually that mm. accept you for who you are. I mean, My they'll really come to you. You know exactly. Don't, please, ladies, ladies, please, from the bottom of my fucking heart, don't gap your legs open for the first guy that pays you a compliment. Oh god, no. Please don't. Please don't, okay? But if you, if you like having sex, if you like having sex, that's fine. But wrap it up. Make the fucker wear a condom. And I'm sorry, if a guy says a condom's too big, run. Because he gonna break your pussy. And not in a good way. Because if, yeah, you, let me, if you understand, let me if you don't know, they stress test condoms, and condoms will literally, a condom can physically fucking go up my entire arm. I got bored when I, I have, tested this theory. 
I have actually seen people put a condom, stretch a condom over their head. I've seen it and happen. And inflate so it with says, their nose. So if they say that their dick's too big for condoms, run! That means that means it's as big as a fucking Mack truck, and it's not gonna fit anyway. Run! To, they've done tests to the point that I'm sorry, and this is gonna be stupid and gross. I have seen. Well, I have re read. I've not seen this. God forbid. I, I actually don't want to see that. They put regular human condoms on horses and elephants. Okay, to test just how big these fuckers and how well these things can stretch. So if a guy tells you that his dick's too big for a condom, run. I don't give a shit. Run. Scream and run. Ah! Run. Because they're lying. Or if they're not lying, you're gonna die. Yeah. And no dick, no fucking sexual partner is worth your life. Let me tell you that right now. If no. you're bipolar, if you have my kind of bipolar, one of the things you will feel the need to do is find sexual gratification or f or emotional gratification through sex and it seems like it's good and it seems like it's great and it seems like it's the best thing in the world and that guy really likes you or that girl really likes you and they're really like into you until you get in the bed with them then they don't call. They don't text you anymore. They don't contact you in any way. And if you try to call them, suddenly their number's changed. And you gotta realize you were just their toy. They just wanted to get in your pants. Not everyone's like that. I get that. Not everyone's like that, but too many people are. And that's the problem. Too many people And there's are. no way to know just by looking at them. Exactly. You can't tell by their looks, you can't tell by their actions, because you know what? They're putting on a mask. Everybody's wearing a mask. And... When people take those masks off around you... When, when you just know that person, that basic fucking person... Even then, it's, it's not a sure shot. I guess what I'm trying to say is, practice caution in everything. But don't, I'm not saying, you know, hide away in a padded fucking cell or, you know, in your house and whatnot, but be careful. Now, I love my kids. I love my kids to death. But I shouldn't have had them so early. I was 20. 20, 21, something like that. With my first son. And... I was pregnant when I got married. I didn't marry the right guy. We were divorced within two years. After, mind you, we had a second child together. So, take it as a precaution. Take my tale, even though I'm not really telling you everything, because you honestly you don't fucking need to know. Take it as a caution to be cautious, to be, I don't know, afraid sometimes. If you have to be afraid, be afraid. If it means you don't fucking gap your legs open and, you know, get knocked up and whatnot, and you don't ruin your fucking life. And I'm not saying that my kids ruined my life. So what I'm saying, what I'm saying is... A lot of shit went down. A lot of shit that did fuck up my life. That surrounded my children. But that's not me saying that it's my kid's fault. It's not. And like I said, I grew up in abuse, an abusive home. There was no sexual abuse or anything like that. But when I was 16, and I was sexually abused by a stranger, my parents blamed me. Do you know what and that does to a girl? Even a girl who doesn't have mental issues. Think about what that does to a girl with mental issues. Who's only being forced to choke on Ritalin. And let me just say, if somebody, if that happened, happened or happens to you, 
and they try to blame you for it, tell them to fuck off because it's not your fault. I don't care how old. No matter what you were, no matter how old you are, no matter what you were wearing, no matter what you were doing, no it was what not you said, your fault. No matter what you drank. Also, good God, please don't fucking take drinks from strangers. No, and watch your damn drink when you're at a bar. No, ever set your what? drink down. Don't ever set your drink no. down. No. And if you have to go to the bathroom, hopefully you'll have a designated driver with you, for one thing. And it's somebody you trust, hopefully. Uh, yeah. um, leave it with them and make sure they don't fucking take their eyes off of it. Because you don't know who is going to walk up on your drink. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's been watching you. And, you know, if necessary, order another drink when you get back. No, honestly, not if necessary do that. You need to order a different drink when you get back. If you don't finish the drink you have when you go to the bathroom, get another drink. Get a fresh one. I don't care. And if you can't afford to have a fresh drink, then you probably shouldn't be at the bar anyway. Exactly. But, a lot of my life I grew up being ostracized, being made fun of, being angry, and hateful, and spiteful, and just an emotional wreck. And I never could admit that I was the problem, or part of it. I couldn't admit that I had a problem. I hated that I had to take medicine, and I wouldn't take medicine properly, and that was a big problem there, too. Because it took me a long time to find out, you know, that the medicines I was being given weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. And, you know, the medicines that I were, was being given was causing more problems than they were helping solving. One thing I got, I, one thing I can say is, fuck high school, okay? Fuck the people there. Don't actually physically fuck them. Just <coughs> yeah, no, no. You know, you know yeah, don't. the people there are meaningless. Literally, their lives are nothing. And to be entirely honest. If you didn't have any friends in high school, if you didn't date anybody in high school, that's probably for the best. Because you're after you graduate, you're not going to see any, any of them hardly ever again, unless you go to the same college. And even then, the likelihood of you seeing them and you know staying friends with them or frenemies or acquaintances or whatever mm -hmm. is low. And there are exceptions, of course. Um, take this from a twenty, almost twenty-two year old virgin. I didn't date in high school. I had friends, but it took me a while to learn that I needed actual real friends rather than acquaintances. Um, so yeah, high school's meaningless. Mm -hmm. Hell, now you're not even learning things that'll help you fucking survive out in the real world. They're teaching you what you need to know to pass their fucking tests. Mm -hmm. And it's been that way so, for a long time. It has. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Standardized tests are standardized for a reason. It's just so they can teach you the same shit, and it's not even things that are going to help you. And honestly, for the longest time, I can't remember if this is the... I, I can't even remember, honestly, if this is the exact um, thing. Which was that the, the shit that was going on with Hitler was going on at the exact same time as Martin Luther King, I think, here in the States, right? Uh, let me think. Let me, here, let me, let me do some searching. We'll see, World War II. It was something like that. When was World War II? Okay, 1939 to 1945. Civil Rights Movement. There was something that was going on at the exact same time. The, the civil rights movement happened right after, in, in the decade after. Mm. 
um, because World War II ended in 45, and then the Civil Rights Movement started in the 50s, almost 10 years later. So, yeah, there were... I don't know, there was something... That's Einstein, that is possible, because that was right around the time that the atomic bomb and all that must have dropped in. Yeah! Yeah. So, like, that's, you know, those are, those are huge things that they don't teach you. You know, they, in the way they teach you, it makes it seem like they were, like, hundreds of years apart. When in reality, they were in the same fucking lifetime. And they're teaching revisionist history. They're teaching from the winner's point of view, not how things actually were. Exactly. So, you know. This got off topic. Um, yeah, how, what are we up to? Oh, shit, we are at 30 minutes. Okay, let's cut it here and do another one. Alright. If you still have more you want to say, that is. I guess, long story short, guys, is if you're still sticking around, still watching this far in, don't settle for what you think you deserve. But also, don't reach beyond what you're actually capable of. Find out what you can do. Find out what you can tolerate. And make your life something that's okay for you. Get the medical attention you need. And don't just sit there and religiously take the first thing that they fucking tell you to take. Try it out for a week, two weeks, a month. But if you don't feel any better, if things don't become more manageable, if things don't become more survivable, you need to get something else. Like, me personally, I take Zoloft, and then I take Trazodone to sleep at night. Well, whenever I actually decide to go to sleep, because I have insomnia as well, so that's fun. Um, just do what's right for you. And, you know, for some of you, it'll be manageable. Um, for some of you, it'll be a battle to find your normal. But when you do, Own you'll it. be better for it. Own it. And... Don't be you ashamed. Know, Please, I'm begging you. Don't be ashamed that you have something wrong with you. It's not your fault. And... And no one I would should like make you feel like scum. Least and I would yourself. like to think... I would like to think that we're all meant to be the way we are. I mean, I'm personally a believer that everything happens for a reason. So, you know, maybe you having whatever you have is a good thing in its own twisted, odd, cosmic way. I mean, um... Yeah, because, I mean, shit, you could be like a Kardashian, and honestly, it looks but, fun, but really... You can be Chris Paytas and be dumb as a box of rocks. I ain't gonna say shit. Oh, you could be Shane Dawson thinking that you're bisexual. Because, but wishing you were gay because it would be easier. I'm not even getting on this topic and, because I will fucking freak out. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, and that's I'm enough, not in a good state to deal with that shit. It, and that's enough shade for Throne for the Night. Mm -hmm. Um, So, thank you for watching. And, you know... I'd like to do one more that just kind of summarizes the whole it gets better thing. Um, if, it, if we get to it, then mm -hmm. <laughs> we will. But, um, but yeah. Um, um, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening, a wonderful day, a wonderful night, a wonderful life. Comment and tell us what you want to see. And have a wonderful night. Yeah. Um, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Wave, fucker. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>